The events that constitute consciousness, the things we see, feel, think, and desire, are information that we can manipulate and use. Thus, we might think of consciousness as intentionally ordered information. Greetings, friends. Ollie here, and today's video is by special request. A friend of mine on YouTube by the name of Your Necessary Fallen Angel asked that I make a video about mazes and labyrinths as a metaphor for the human mind or human consciousness. I think it's really useful to have models that we can rely on to help us understand things more efficiently. And nowhere is this more true than with regard to the human mind and human consciousness. It's really tricky to not only study these things, but also experiment with them. And so throughout history, you'll find that different philosophers and teachers came up with metaphors in order to help explain and illustrate the very nature of human consciousness and the nature of the mind. So for instance, the philosopher Plato had a metaphor where he compared the mind to a chariot and the self was the charioteer, and the chariot was being pulled by two horses, one of which was beautiful and strong and obedient, and the other one who was ugly, stupid, and disobedient. Um, so obviously this model or this metaphor breaks the mind down into different parts, and by using this metaphor, we can understand those parts in different ways. So the conscious mind, the type of mind that you can use to solve mathematical equations, for example, would be the strong, beautiful, and obedient horse. The part of you that is more animal, that has cravings and desires, and that speaks with feelings rather than symbols, that would be the ugly, disobedient horse. The one that always pulls to where it wants to go, and it doesn't care what the other horse says, and it doesn't care what the charioteer does, because... Really, that horse wants what it wants, and I'm sure if you observe yourself in life and if you think back, you will remember situations and events in your life where you were being guided by that horse. Jung had a different model where he talked about the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. And then there are the scientific models of the brain itself, which is obviously connected to consciousness and mind. The scientists can dissect the brain into one of two ways. Either we can talk about the left and right hemispheres, or we can talk about the tripartite brain, which has the reptilian, mammalian, and neocortex, the frontal lobes, right? So we can divide the brain into two parts, we can divide it into three parts, and depending on how we do it and what model we use, we glean different bits of information, or we get different insights into the workings of the mind. At the end of the day, the purpose of a model is to better understand the thing that we are studying. And the value of the model is merely its efficiency in describing and I don't think any of these models are 100% right and I don't think that that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for a model that is a 100% accurate representation because no such model exists. Models and metaphors are by their very nature, representations. And so a representation is never as true as the original. But that being said, a lot of these models are useful. And today we're going to talk about a different type of model. We're going to talk about the mind or consciousness as a maze or labyrinth. As your necessary fallen angel pointed out, there are a number of resources and traditions that rely on these metaphors. So I could have gone to any number of places and found good information to make this video with. But as soon as the request came, I had an idea and I kind of figured I would go with this angle. The quote that I read at the beginning of this video is from Mihaly Chichmihaly. You might remember him from his book, Flow, The Science of Optimal Experience. Now, in the quote, he says that we can regard the objects of consciousness, the sensations, the memories, the experiences, as information. And so we can regard consciousness itself as intentionally ordered information. So how does this fit with the maze slash labyrinth analogy, or model, if you will? So behind me, you should be seeing right now a comparison of the two. On the one side, you have a labyrinth, and on the other side, you have a maze. And just looking at them, 
you can see really clearly and really quickly that there's a significant difference between a maze and a labyrinth. Now we can get into semantics, but ultimately we don't even need to go that much into detail. I think we can agree that the maze on the one side is chaotic, disorderly, and there's no real rhyme or reason to it. There are multiple passages in, multiple forking paths and dead ends as you enter the maze, and there's no real destination. You're just trying to get from one end to the other. So compare that to the labyrinth now. The labyrinth is symmetrical and orderly. There's one way in and one way out. And at the midway point, you find yourself in the direct center of the labyrinth. So to me, the analogy or the model of consciousness that we are discussing here is useful for illustrating some basic facts about the human experience and the human mind. When you live from an outside-in orientation, that is, when you take your authority from the outside, when you seek validation and success and happiness on the outside through external achievements and accomplishments and so on, material possessions, whatever, there's no real satisfaction you don't really know where you're going. You find yourself wandering and coming into dead ends quite frequently. You think you were going to get to the other side and all of a sudden you're just facing a wall. It's hard to tell what's what and who's who. It's hard to find meaning in the world. It's hard to find pleasure in the world because the state of consciousness is disorderly. See, there's too much stuff going on out there, and it's all beyond your control. So if you place all of the importance on the outside, I would say that your state of mind or your state of consciousness is going to be like a maze and not like a labyrinth. It's going to be chaotic and disorderly, and it's going to be confusing. So now if you flip that orientation around and you start living from the inside out rather than the outside in, that is, if you start placing more importance on character, and virtue, and making the best of every experience, no matter what it is externally. If you start to set goals that are totally within your reach, goals that you can accomplish without interference from forces you can't control, then all of a sudden the maze begins to shift, and it changes. It becomes more orderly. It becomes easier and more clear for you to achieve the things that you're looking for, the goals that you're pursuing, because you've radically changed your goals. Whereas before, maybe your goals were all external, they were outward facing goals, like getting a promotion, bigger house, nice car, etc., etc. Now your goals are internal. Now your goals are, how can I not desire the new house? How can I find a way to be grateful for what I have instead of craving things that I don't have? When you start to shift like this and to set those types of goals, the maze becomes a labyrinth. It becomes orderly inside you. The mind, the consciousness, everything is structured and ordered. There's one way in and one way out. It's simple. You don't have to worry about all those distractions out there. You just have to focus on the internal world and your internal goals. And if you do that, you'll find your way in and out of the labyrinth with ease. Here's another quote from the book Flow that sort of illustrates what I'm saying. Flow is the way people describe their state of mind when consciousness is harmoniously ordered. So we've talked about flow states a little bit before. To me, the flow state is another word for what the Taoists call uwe, which is a state of no mind or lack of self-consciousness when instead of thinking you are just doing and fully immersed and engaged in the doing, this is a flow state, a state of optimal experience. You get immersed in the activity. The activity itself becomes enjoyable. It has a clear goal and the feedback is direct. So as you're doing it, you know whether or not you're doing a good job. It's not ambiguous, it's not confusing. You don't have to wonder whether your boss is gonna like it or whether um, you know, it was good enough to get you whatever you were going for. You know immediately as you're doing it that it's working and you get satisfaction from doing the task. And so this experience that Mihaly Chichmihaly describes 
occurs when consciousness is orderly. In other words, it happens when the inner world is a labyrinth rather than a maze. Well, I hope that this was insightful for you and your necessary fallen angel if you're watching this. I hope that I was able to surprise you a little bit. Uh, I don't think that this is the direction that you were expecting me to take with this video and that's why I did it this way. I like to throw people off and I also like to um, do the unexpected. Thanks a lot for joining me and don't forget to live well, my friends.